Ladies and gentlemen, I'm backstage at the Breakdancing Convention and I'm about to introduce to you Table Floor from Uganda and their breakdancing in London. I'm Philip from Uganda, Table Floor representing the East Harbor. Isingoma Edward representing Table Floor. And shout outs to Abdul Muyingo, who is not with us today. UK, Uganda. I go by the name of John Z D, artistic director of Breaking Convention, old school MC. I wanna hear it. <laughs> <laughs> Antonio Boka, Sebuma, proud to be Ugandan. Love you guys. Ziwa Hakim, aka B Boy Hack, from Uganda, Table Floor represent. We are the flow, still in Uganda. How and what exactly leads you to perform in front of an audience? When you perform, yeah, you need your energy as dance on stage. Yeah. But the, the crowd itself has to do something that really has to get your spirits up. Yeah. yeah. So the morale that those people give you, all those, all those like, yeah. yeah. The shouts then that they do. You feel like you have to show off more. Yeah, it gives you this thing in you that just leads you to doing stuff that you, don't, you didn't even prepare to do on stage. And the other thing, what drives you at times? Okay, most times it's your members plus the crowd that you're into. Yeah. Because at times you may perform a, a, a crowd that is not so much familiar to you, the yeah. style that we're into. And you look be much driven away, okay, or be taken yeah. by the flow of the energy or the vibe or the tone. So most times it's with the members that bring the energy together. The crowd being pleased to work. How so. did you start dancing? How Personally, I started dancing way back in school. I was say like six years back in secondary school. And um, later on, well, there's this organization that me as a founding member and other, uh, other youth, um, created this NGO called Breakdance Project Uganda, mm -hmm. uh, which uses breakdance and some other elements of people for positive social change. Mm -hmm. um, we use this breakdance to bring the youth together, you know, it's more like a social voluntary sort of thing, you know, to uh, give the youth something else to do that kind of keep them active, you know, those who are engaged in the hip hop. So most of us come from guys, that's why we made. The government involved in that because over here, mm -hmm. when when let's say when bank creating the chibi nanti no chine chibi na changi chaku yiki zavan tukuzina, the government will get involved and take it seriously. That wow, she's taking the people off the street or she's developing the community. Do you have that in Uganda? I would say the government doesn't always jump on board at the ground level, but it's more like you yourself pushing yourself to put up something. When they see that it's working, that's when they jump on board. Right. And after something and they see it's working, they're like, oh. You guys are doing an amazing thing, and you know, yeah. So that's what happens. But with Breakdance Project Uganda, it's more like teaching free of charge, it's more like exchange, you know, teaching each other different breakdance skills. But later on, we thought that maybe we could do something out of these skills, you know, so we have like a dance company, something like So we are doing more like a dance company at the same time giving back to society. different ages I was doing different styles like you know in Uganda there was a time when Lingala was really uh, getting style so I was different to Lingala and then in my entire school life I was engaged in uh, music dance and drama so I was part of the uh, cultural dances here and there so and then my music journey was uh, my dance journey was really hit up by me winning uh, some national dance competition in Uganda it was called Steps yeah so that's when I was like oh man I really think I can and a living out of this, so 
from that day on, like like you also you say, like even phone in the greatest way to be under. That's how my life uh, came to be what it is right now. I mean, like, to, to also think about that, um, a lot of the schools in Uganda do um, the traditional dancing. Yeah. Uh, have, do, have they started to involve the break dancing as well? To be honest with you, it's not yet like in school curriculum here and there, but uh, for the moment now, break dancing is earning a lot of like uh, attention to the extent that uh, back in the days there are certain uh, events that only wanted to hire like people with maybe traditional, this traditional, that, but these days even people hire like break, us as break dancers to bring like on big um, events. So the schools that are trying to pick up uh, the break dance thing are more like international schools because yeah. they, they are more receptive with the urban sort of thing. But these are the type of schools that are doing well, you know, academic ones, so they, they still stick to the cultural thing. They, they don't welcome the urban people. Maybe when they are just clubs like interact club that just go to different schools and you know, is, is there still major competitions um, in terms of the trip? You know, like they used to do competitions yeah. for the tradition. Most of that happens in school right? today. There are very few companies nowadays who do, who do the traditional things because most of them they are breaking away and others are just making troops for their own. Like, you know, they are a troop, they just mm -hmm. keep it on big international and all, but the, the competition issue is only staying in school. Uh, Back to um, how the Free Dance Project you guys study. Because a friend of ours is called Abrams, he came up with the idea of Free Dance Project Uganda. So uh, he had his friend, retired break dancer and filmmaker, he's an Irish uh, gentleman. He's a retired break dancer and filmmaker. So he had the basic break dance skills. Uh, of course, we used to break dance well, but, but we didn't have like the basic, you know, proper technical, you know. So he laid the foundation of those technical skills uh, where we we'll, you know, start doing the whole thing. You know, we're one of the first students to get his classes. And the fact that he's a filmmaker, he had that, that you know, doing the film about the entire organization. Um, at some point, he saw so the skills had grown. I came up with the idea of uh, bringing up uh, John bringing him over and maybe making it a part of the film, you know, of building a piece together with him. And that's the piece that we did at the Breaking Convention. Because it's that artistic director of Breaking Convention that okay. happens every, every, every May at Sadler's World Theatre in London. What are your plans in London? Was it specifically for the show? Apart from the Breaking Convention. Yeah. Uh, uh, we managed to travel to Scotland uh, to some festivals called Share territories. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we, we we worked with them for the whole weekend, the last weekend, and managed to get back today. And uh, from today, we're just going to like yeah, like chill, chill out, and visit so. our relatives and get back. In addition to the plans, originally it was mainly breaking convention, yeah. straight up breaking breaking convention. But the fact that we had met some people from the UK before, the United Kingdom before. Yeah. Some friends had been looking at the camp back home. And she thought we would share our experience with oh, the youth. Yeah. yeah, with the youth in Edinburgh, Scotland. So the whole program is about performing workshops and also having a collaboration with them because the Shared Territories uh, project it involves musicians, dancers and rappers. So we had a collaboration with dance rap. Do you have any plans of coming back to London? Hopefully, uh, from from what from the performance that we did last week, uh, many people were blown away by the culture, and the dances that we did, fusing hip hop and African dances. So, in the art that we did, people, many people liked it, and hopefully, I believe it's going to be a way in the future. In the future, I think. Already, some other companies are interested. Interested. A lot of the people were saying that you guys should definitely come back for Britain's Got Talent. Well, Maybe but special. That's for or, or, or X Factor or something. Uh, yeah, that's for British. Well, you don't yeah, think that British? Yes, yeah. still in Uganda. Yeah. We can come and show.
introduced to you, John Z, the main man who brought Tampa Flow to London. Yeah, um, it was really important when I first saw these guys in Kampala um, on an invitation by an Irish Ugandan who spent some time out there making films and people. He told me he was making a film about the night dancers and he wanted to um, basically track my um, experience of seeing these guys and he didn't want to, he wanted to do a lot of stuff about Break the Dance Project in Uganda. So um, yeah, that was how I went out there. There was no ties, there was no, John Z, these guys have got to do London. I was always like, nah man, it's like, nah, I'm just gonna come out and check it out, see what's going on. Um, but we had a meeting and we discussed this idea about doing a hip hop dance theater piece about the night dances and I made it clear that if it's good, it's going to be a breaking convention, you know what I mean? Um, so then I went back to London and it almost kind of slipped my mind a little bit until I received an email from Abdul saying, Jonesy, we did it. And there was a link and I clicked on the link and they did the whole piece, the whole idea. Wow. And, you know, I just said, right, that's it. We've got to do this for Breaking Convention. Um, so I went out there and I worked with them a little bit, developing some of the ideas. And, um, yeah, and then we came here and da-da! John Z, are you also a dancer then? Is this how you managed to connect with the guys? Yeah, I mean, um, basically I have had quite a relatively long career in dance theatre and stuff. Um, I trained at London Contemporary Dance School. Um, but originally I used to break and stuff back in the first generation of hip hop in this country, you know what I'm saying? Um, AKA old school, yeah? Um, and what I've been really focused on is this intersection between hip hop and theatre because I believe in my little experience of theatre that hip-hop dance techniques have got a lot to offer this space. Um, so when I left school, I just commit, I was committed to the idea of developing the hip-hop theatre as a genre. Um, that resulted in me creating work in 1996, a piece called um, Lyrical Theatre. Um, I developed that and I made a show called Aeroplane Man that toured around the UK. Um, Lyrical Fear also toured um, na internationally. Um, at this time, there wasn't anybody doing hip hop culture in a theatrical context. So for me, I felt quite lonely actually in the UK doing it and trying to eulogize this. Because there's always been ballet and all these other, you know, Precisely. art scenes, but not really hip hop dancing. I mean, high art, one would say, which makes me question what's low art, and I believe that low art is this kind of stuff that we do, the street stuff. Well, I've always believed that there's a sophistication to this technique and this culture that you cannot front on. And all we need is a platform like Sadler's Wells to show how brilliant we are. So um, I was really happy that the artist and director here invited me um, eight years ago to um, come and direct a hip hop dance theatre festival and just been doing that. Um, and also I'm consistently on the lookout to surprise this audience in England with another country that is expressing hip hop, you know what I mean? Yeah. And for me, when I heard about Break Dance Project in Ghana, I was just so moved by the essence of why they do it, you know what I mean? The idea of, I wasn't paid to, to yeah. learn, so I'm not gonna pay to teach. This is beautiful, and this is some of the, the roots of original hip hop culture yeah. that I'm reminded of, because right now it's turned so commercial the people don't get up, they, they won't answer their phone unless they're getting paid, do you yeah. know what I mean? So what does um, Tabu Flow exactly mean? Tabu Flow? Uh, tabu is a Luganda word. A Tabu. You know what a Tabu means, much of it. So a Tabu... Uh, Damn, you ain't been here for a while, have you? Yeah, it's a Tabu. Oh, you're like, oh, Tabu. Yeah, so it's oh. a Tabu. We cut we the E off there, we put Tabu. Tabu means chaos, ruckus, mm. on the floor. So, as we discovered each other, like, him being good at being good at being creative, him being good at creative, doing different yeah, styles. So, in that, so we decided to meet up them. Decided that name, which took us a while to make it up, so. I could imagine, because, well, did you have other options of other names as well? Yes, we yeah. did some other funny things. <laughs> we, we, basically, we, everyone had to come up with a certain name, and then we had to discuss about it. But uh, Tabu came out to be like 
I told much about our personalities because actual senses we we kind of crazy in a way, but in a good way. So I believe uh, we sat down. And we're like, you know what? This kind of describes us best. So it even sinks in with the night dancer thing when you come down the wave. So we kind of creepy but crazy. So, so tell us about the night dancer thing. What was that about exactly? The night dancer. Yes. Yeah. The night dancer. Our sexy. <laughs> These are human beings. Uh-huh. These are human beings that transform at night. And dancing. So, do you know the performance you did on uh, over here at the PSO? Was that related to our So the whole piece, it, 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 it's all based in a, a rural uh, environment, a rural area, because that's what happens mostly. Mm-hmm. And it, it portrays out how these night dancers relate with the people in society, mm-hmm. how they affect the people in the society, how the people deal with them if they find out they're night dancers. So it's, oh, wow. you know. Yeah. In which Jones decided to come in and give a hand and make it more interesting for the theatre, in the theatre work, because uh, each one of us, we decided to sit down and think about uh, this character belongs to him, this character belongs to him. Like he is doing like a drunk and at the same time he's a night dancer. Right. So, with the help of him, we decided to bring it up so that it goes up where people will always love every piece of it. Every piece of it. Because I can imagine when someone first hears it, or when I first heard it, night dancers are like, whoa. No, 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 I'm a Christian, I'm not mm. watching that. Mm. But when you elaborate more and explain, then it makes sense. But um, I guess, don't, don't you think it was a bit risky to call it that? Um, I think the risk is the precipice of excitement, the precipice of mm. new work, the precipice of amazing. So for me, I think that, you know, risk is central to innovation. You need to come to Uganda and watch it. We're doing it with June. Last weekend of June. That's good. It's going to be a longer, like a one hour. You're doing the exact same performance you did yeah, here over there. More people. More people. Yeah, we'll make it. Put some girls, you know, we'll make it balance. Do girls break dance in Uganda as well? Is there a group for girls? Yeah, mainly guys, but I would say there are also specific individual girls that try it out, that are really in you know, progress. The number is not so much, but it's picking, you know, they are picking. Picking up. Do you think I can pick it up as well? Yeah. If you have your commitment. So can you guys show me some moves? <laughs> Are you interested? Yeah, you know. Let's let's do some moves. Oh, no! oh, no! oh, no! taking it to another level. All the Ugandans out there in London, support, support Tabu Flow, and support Breaking Convention. Sadler's Wells is a place to be ever. Come and check it out. There's always good stuff for you. All right? Highlight your boys. Everything he said is true. He 